Conversations with the world's top drummers in the most extreme genres. This episode is brought to you by Los Cabos Drumsticks, Canada's number one choice for drumsticks. They provide the wood you need to make the beats you deserve. Los Cabos Drumsticks. Now with your host, Corey Hopping. What is up, guys? Happy New Year to all of you. This is another year and another episode of the We're Talking Drums podcast. I got my good buddy Kevin Alexander on to kick off the year. I hope that everybody had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's. You guys celebrated in style, you know. Uh, I myself, you know, we uh, had a nice little family thing, you know. It's always nice to see some family uh that this time of year you know it's uh it's cold we're uh I, I i'm up here in in canada the great white north as they say and it's uh you know starting to get a little chilly it's dark you know it's that time of year everybody's a little sad but uh you know what hopefully this episode brings you a little bit of a little bit of joy, you get some laughs out of it. I had a great conversation with Kevin. Before we get into it, if you are new to the podcast, your first time listening, maybe second time, maybe third, who knows? Maybe you've been here since its inception, and I thank you for that. Just want to let you know we do have a Patreon for the podcast. If you want to support, uh, you get the episodes early uh and we have some bonus content on there as well some special perks for all you patreon members uh you can go today and sign up uh there is a free section as well which will have some perks on it so go all you got to do is click subscribe you can either do free or you know it's only two dollars canadian which to any American, that's like a couple pennies, I think, pretty sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's it for there. Uh, I want to thank Los Cabos Drumsticks for all the support over the years as well. You guys are absolutely amazing. And uh, you know what? I'll be on tour in uh, in March. So I got a couple more episodes planned already for this year and then uh i'll be doing some while on the road as well you can uh, see my band lotharo uh we'll be on tour in march through may in north america supporting the amazing dudes in raven and vicious rumors so uh you can check the show notes uh, for all those dates and hopefully i'll see you in a town near you or a city who knows uh so without further ado man we're we're we got a a killer episode to get to here me and kevin uh sat down while he was on tour with beyond creation he was uh just filling in he says uh doing a tour session drumming for beyond creation and uh, we were in toronto at the opera house Found some time after sound check, uh, and so it, we. It was uh, a great chat. We talked uh, about all kinds of stuff, uh, like not being able to sleep while on the road and still having to play every night. Uh, he also has some unusual footwear for playing drums, so. You'll find out more pretty early on in the episode, uh, but thank you, Kevin, for making the time to sit down and chat with me, and I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. Here we go, episode 74. Here's my conversation with Kevin Alexander. Kevin Alexander. Yes, sir. Man, welcome up? to the We're Talking Drums podcast, man. How you doing today? Pretty, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Can't wait to rip it and uh, eat some good food. Eat yeah. some good food. Eat some good yeah. meat. What's uh, what's your go-to meal pre? Do you do pre or post show? 
I do pre pre show. I stock myself up. Probably shouldn't. I did ramen two nights ago. Okay. I had the shit right before. That's the way it always. You always need to pre show shit. Yeah. And I did take the <laughs> shit. <laughs> you got it. It's always like right as the band before you is doing their last song. You're like, fuck, I got a shit. So I did. I fucking. I'm like, yo. I'm, I put on like two symbols, and I'm like. I got to go shit, man. I got it. Yeah, here. can you finish this Mighty. up, man? Yeah, 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 finish it up. <laughs> I'll be back. Hit the intro. I'll be back in time, I swear. Yeah, yeah. but if not, it's just a standard go of meat, rice, or, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's a really nice Thai food place across the street. I think I saw it. Yeah. I was walking. Yeah, yeah. If you're into Thai food, it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, it was super dead when we walked in. I just came from there. I had a wonderful Dude, Thai. I, I love Thai food. I've been yeah. to Thailand. And I, oh, yeah. I've, cheap and so good so good nice how how does the food in thailand compare to here though i i've never been to any part of asia or it's anything like fucking that, so. great man uh, a lot of flavor a lot of fruits there's a lot of a lot of vegetables yeah. a lot of okay. stir fries yeah a lot of flavor man yeah you know less fat <laughs> Which is good. A lot of rice. A lot of rice. (laughs) rice. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, um, I think one of my favorites is Japanese, uh, Balinese, and Thai. And Thai. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, you got you got a nice Thai food place. You got a little bit of time here. Yes. You know. Yeah. (laughs) We're at the Opera House in Toronto. Uh, It's been a while since I've been here, even. But this is the first time you've been here. This is the first time I play here. Yeah. 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 It's nice. So you're on tour with Beyond Creation right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's been it's been a really wild ride. It's been good. Yeah. How did all this come about? Because you're just filling in for this tour, right? I'm filling for uh, Philippe Boucher. Yeah. He um, he he put on a an announcement pretty much that he doesn't want to tour long tours. You know, and playing with Hugo and Kevin uh, in Brought by Pain, it was just natural that I just fill in. And i pretty much been just working at doing YouTube videos and not getting seen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about time someone picks me up and just brings me on tour with them. Because, you know, pretty much same five guys, same five U.S. drummers get all the session gigs all the time. Pretty much, right? And here yeah. we are in Canada. They're just like, hi, I can play too, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, especially yeah. like being, you're from Montreal as yeah. well. You yeah, know, so and, it was just like, it was, yeah, it was perfect, you know? Yeah, it worked out. Because I know I've been waiting for a couple of years for you to get picked up by some band. I've been watching your videos on Instagram and YouTube. That yeah, you it's put been out. slow, man. Yeah, slow. but they're they're fantastic, and I was like, how, why does this guy not play for a bigger band? <laughs> like it never made sense to me. Like you got the speed, you got the style, you know. Like it's a lot of drummers, even on YouTube and stuff. Just, they just sit there and they, they they play. They're fast, you know. They're precise, everything like that. But I find when it comes to a live show, having energy. Oh, and, yeah. you know, like putting more into your playing is crucial. And you you, you show have that. to put on a show, man. Like yeah. I, I grew up listening to fucking Molly Crew, uh, just bands that perform. And every time I get on stage, I'm not just playing. Unless I'm having a really bad show, right? Oh, I'm yeah, having a bad we, show and I'm yeah. like, these fucking... New- <laughs> <laughs> these pedals. Yeah, these fucking pedals. Are yeah, yeah, it's a broken spring problem. or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Then you're kind of serious, but still, like it's a show, man. So you gotta you gotta show it and play your heart out every night because you don't know when the mm-hmm. last time you're gonna be doing it. You know, and it's been a dream. These these shows have been packed. Yeah, yeah. Like full house. So it's just been a dream, and yeah, man. <laughs> That's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, you guys uh, yeah. on the bus. You guys are with Neo Bliviscaris on this run. Yeah, and and the Omnific and um, actually the Omnific and Neo are on a bus. So we're in an uh-huh. RV. We, we, guys, took, we took the RV, RV separate. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Th- that makes sense because both those guys are from Australia. There you go. So yeah, they get that. How yeah. you enjoying the RV? Because we did an RV for our tour in May, uh, the US with Ailstorm, yeah. and it was nice. To not be in a van, yes. but also absolute chaos because we're such doing such long drives. It's yeah. all bus routed. And then we'd only have like three to four hours of sleep. Yeah, so I the been, RV wasn't really... I, I haven't been sleeping matter. much because whenever so I try and smoke weed to fall asleep, right. whenever I was high and just, okay, I'm going to bed, boom, starts up the fucking RV and starts driving and starts shaking. And I'm just like... 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So uh, first week or something, I was up for three days straight. And then mm-hmm. I finally slept and it happened again. Up for two days straight. And I was just <laughs> like, I, I had all the energy because we were pretty much going like, uh, we're in hot, uh, hot, hot states and uh, where I was going dipping in the water. Oh, so yeah. I get all oh, that yeah. mineral, all the minerals, the, the vitamin D. So I had like oh, full yeah. fucking power. I didn't want oh, to go yeah. to bed. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the energy from the crowd. So I was just like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I'm good. I can stay but, up for yeah, three days. But it catches yeah. up, you know, it catches up after. So Yeah, it always does. Somebody looks at you like, man, you look fucking exhausted you're like oh shit i guess i am yeah i guess i, <laughs> I, guess I haven't slept in four days so <laughs> and like exerting all that energy on stage every night yeah. too right yeah. like it, it it all catches up to you yeah yeah and man. uh yeah what's, what's what's been cool is that you know on youtube if, if, if people see me on youtube i uh they always freak out that i play with flip-flops right do you play live with i play live with flip-flops Dude. And well, I, I made the mistake of like I closed my I, I leave my flip flops in my bag with my mixer and all my wires and I kind of like wasn't closing so I forced it to close and it like chewed up the whole top of my flip flop. Oh, no. So then I had my foot just like fucking just like going through and then I'm st- I started slipping and then I'm like shit maybe this is not a good idea but i kept on doing it <laughs> and i fixed it maybe it's just fix like the time flop, for you know? a new set of flip-flops yes definitely you know yeah definitely. you, know, th- you should have got them when you were down south uh when yeah. i get home i'll fucking because it's got to be the right amount of like heel you know on the yeah. flop and- okay okay yeah it has to be very specific <laughs> very specific yeah. you know how drums are right yeah. everything's got to you move it like this and it changes everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think that you should just get your own brand of flip-flops then. Fucking try and sell them to drummers. Put some fucking black metal studs, you know? You know? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, dude. Everybody has these, like, drum shoes that True. are made for drumming. 90% of the guys I, that I know, though, just wear regular Vans or... I, I haven't tried the, the, the... I think it's called Radom, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you, I, you have them? I have a pair. I I don't use them though. You don't use them because no? I use uh, swivel. Okay. So yeah, they yeah, yeah. the ridges on them are like it's like a thin rubber, so it gives you really good grip if you're just doing single strokes or probably doubles. It works fine, mm-hmm. but for swivel, the rubber was just wearing off onto my pedals. Oh, so, so it was you just, just like black melting pedals, them. Yeah. So yeah, the whole pedal turned black and sticky, and then ruining the shoes. So I was just like, I just stopped wearing them. I just wear a pair of Vans now. Oh, that's sick. That's it. That's all you need, man. Yeah. Yeah, with the flops, I kind of <laughs> sweat in them. So my foot gets black. <laughs> yeah. You know, all the fucking rubbers <laughs> just get on my foot. I can't oh. be healthy, you know? But no, like, no, it can't be. I don't understand how you do it every night. That's a, it you, feels right, dude. Do you, Honestly, it feels right. Do your feet get sweaty? Like, they get sweaty. Does yeah, the sweat so, get on so the what, yeah, what I started I guess, doing is I started putting my fan directed towards my feet. Oh, so it cools them off. Cools them off. Dries them off. <laughs> dries as them off. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Just kind of lift it, lift up the heel a bit, get a little air. Yeah, good. Okay, you good know? to go. Good to good go. To go. Yeah. <laughs> so you uh, you use double strokes. Yeah. For all your fast playing. <laughs> yeah. At yeah. least. Yeah. Um, did you have any uh, hurdles? I guess uh, learning that technique. Like, have you? Been oh using yeah, it for buddy. A while? Yeah, I was. I was. I was doing. I think I learned the technique three years ago. And I was spending four to six hours a day just with my pedals, just getting the technique down. Yeah. And also a lot of it's pedal adjustment. Um, the tempos uh, really vary with the adjustment of the pedals. If I know I'm doing something faster, I'm going to put the spring tension up and the footboard down. Okay. And the beater... I always keep the... Like, I don't put the beater close to the drum head because I find there's no attack. I don't yeah. like that shit. I yeah. want you don't get the uh, the spring the, back from yeah. the rebound, yeah. right? which is what you need. Yeah, dudes yeah. like Mike Caputo do that, and it works for him. Yeah, but I just like power, and and I think with the rebound, you kind of you can kind of like control your stroke as long as it's not too back. When it's too back and your tension is too high, mm-hmm. then you have no control anymore. Like you you hit it once and it goes fast, but then you have no control. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tempos really matter, you know. So so with Beyond, mm-hmm. uh, it's not super fast. Right. So my ten- my attention on the, on the Pearl Demon Drive XRs are not full, 
Because those are big ass springs, dude. And when you put them full, I have no control. Yeah. They just fly. Yeah. They just fly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, if yeah, I want to do yeah. something like, I don't know, 190, I'm like, what, triplets? I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Can't do them. <laughs> can't <laughs> no, do no, them. No, no, no. No control. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah, man, um, pretty much it's very important to, to, to learn how the um, how it works. How it works and how to set your pedals adjusting to the band that you play, you know? Yeah. So, like, if you were to do back-to-back sets with two different bands that have varying tempos, you would change your pedal settings in between sets. Probably. Or find, mm-hmm. like, a good balance where I could pull both off. Right, right. Yeah. You know, just that sweet spot. Because now, mm-hmm. at this point, man, like, I don't even practice the heel toe technique. I just try pedal settings. <laughs> yeah. I just fuck it. around. Oh, if, if I do though. this, because I know if I do that, then it's going to take this attack. So I try and, like, mathematically gauge <laughs> what's going to work. All, all the math going yeah. on in your head. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. For, and just tinker for with fucking it. fucking nerds here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to find a setting that I can do double strokes and swivel with the same tension and footboard and everything like that. Yeah. Like, that's see, my see, goal. see, Kev from Neo does that. He plays singles. And he does doubles, but he himself said, dude, I can't find a right setting. And then he tried my pedals. And yeah. He was like, this is exactly what I need. Yeah. You know? And, he, and I was like, yo, this is what you got to do, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But everyone's got their own way of playing, their own foot and their own, you know? So everyone's got to find their own settings, especially even on the TM2, you know, with the threshold and all that. Yeah. You, you, one, one setting can't work for everyone. No, exactly. Can't, yeah. Can't. We're all find out. Yeah. Like, and depending on how much practice <laughs> and in which way you're practicing, your muscle memory is going to be a little different yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. So when everybody asks, like, everybody wants to know everyone's pedal settings. Like, yeah. that's what, like, the number one question I get is, I want to know pedal settings. And it's like, it's not going to matter. It doesn't yeah. matter what your pedal settings are. Compared to mine, and like everybody's is different. You just got to yeah. tinker with it until something feels good for you. Too comfortable, and you don't get yeah. no retriggering issues. Yeah, yeah. And then guess what? <clears throat> You're still gonna have to tinker with it after that. Oh yeah. It's, you're endlessly gonna be changing. Oh yeah. Shit, dude. Also stages. <laughs> yeah. Oh like yeah. That. So sometimes you know your your pedal is gonna be just a bit up, and you're like, what the fuck? Okay, oh, I gotta dude. do something. And you're just always doing something to make sure your triggers are gonna be fucking tight. Yeah. And it's kind of annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying. Yeah, being in the drummer is the worst. Playing fast but, shit's yeah. annoying, but we love it, right? We do, man. Yeah. yeah, like the fastest songs I have in my set are the most fun. For yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Even though because the, they're not really that fast. <laughs> Realistic, two hundred's not that fast. Well, now so, these days people no. are doing like fucking three hundred. Yeah. Fuck four hundred. I don't even. Yeah, know I what saw that the other day. I'm like, dude, just don't. Just stop. Just don't. Just stop, man. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> unnecessary. Come on. Now I'm like, no, nah, man, I just play with feel, you know? Yeah. yeah like, that's well, what feel, I'm feel, about. Feel so. feel is always the the priority. Like, if you go, mm-hmm. like, just look at Eloy Casagrande. Oh, yeah. You just watch him play drums, and you're like, that's fucking sick. Or Matt Gardska. Oh, yeah. You know, just, just going fast and having no groove is impressive. But it's not a wow factor anymore, at least for me. Yeah. You know? No, it's a, like it's so many people are doing it. And it's like, okay, yeah, you sat down and learned how to do single strokes insanely fast. Now you got to look cool. Yeah. Now you got to look cool <laughs> doing it, man. You gotta now you got to wag your hair. And, do, yeah, you know, do stick crosses. Stick tricks, all that stuff. Windmill. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's the hardest. My hair is way too long now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, shit, sure. it's way too long. Dude. I got to cut it before the next tour. I could just imagine. I, I I did the mistake of just chewing gum and then getting my hair in and getting the oh, gum in. Oh, no. And then, you oh. know, just fucking after the show, my earphones just, what the fuck, dude? You know? Dude, I got mine, I think, when we were in Spain last year. I got mine completely wrapped in my in-ear cord behind me. And like knotted, the whole thing it like got braided into my in ear cable, and I so I had our vocalist Krista like forty minutes trying to unbraid oh and unknot God. it. And I'm like, this shit's gotta stop. I gotta figure this out because like that's no good. 
Yeah, you know? or, or or what you? Yeah, it's tying. Well, no, yeah, you have to let it loose. You got to let it loose. Like you got to. Yeah, I can't have my hair tied up when I'm playing. I'm not playing fast enough. You know what for you that. gotta do? I, yeah. I think what okay. we all gotta do is install okay. a fan right between our toms, just blowing here, so it just fucking flies right? back. Because, dude, if you have a fan anywhere behind you, your hair is it's blowing. Kind of blowing in. It's, yeah, it's no good. Yeah. It's no good. Then it gets caught in your sticks all the time. <laughs> like, no. I always tell them, no fans. No fans on and stage. And then you just sweat. And just you sweat. Just... I like the heat, though. Yeah. You know, the heat's the best yeah. on stage. It keeps your muscles loose. True, you know? true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you... long as it don't drip, like, too much on your hands. Yeah. And then you can't grip the stick. Yeah, so that's, that's why I kind of use wristbands. You know? Use wristbands. I've yeah, been thinking yeah. about getting some. I haven't used yeah. them in a in a couple of years now. I used to, and then I I lost them somewhere along the way. I just never got new ones. Yeah, so. I had a pair, and then Beyond Creation had their own wristbands with their logo, so they're just oh. like, here. I'm like, sick, perfect, sick. done. Yeah, I always make sure I have a towel. Always got to wipe off the arms. Oh yeah, and, and the hands. Like that's the biggest one. Yeah, I always forget that. Yeah, and I always forget towel. my sticks on stage. So I can't go warm up backstage. And it always <laughs> happens to me. Yeah. The always guys, before you start playing and you're like, oh, oh fuck, fuck, I can't warm up, dude. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> always keep one pair completely separate from everything else. I know. Your warm up sticks, you know, with a yeah. pad and all that. Forget. I don't even have yeah. a pad. I just use couches. Couches. Yeah. I use my legs, back of the yeah. arm. Actually, what, what Jerome has, he's got this like, uh, it's a minor, um Little pad that you strap on your, on oh, your foot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, your, yeah. Um, Under your thigh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you strap it on so you have like a... <laughs> little pad that on the That was again. fucking cool. I was like, yeah. I need that. I yeah, that's not... That. You could just wear that all day, you know? <laughs> it's like an accessory now. And um, yeah, we're on the topic. Um, Kevin's got an interesting technique. Kevin Pagazzi from Neo. He's got like a... I'm not going to say push-pull... But it's sort of like that. He's just doing normal struck, but then he's pulling. So it's like he's right? Yeah. Instead of push pull, push pull, you got to use your thumb and he's just doing a normal stroke. But the pull is the same motion. Okay. So I stole that from him and I'm like practicing it. You're practicing that. I'm stoked because it's gonna help with endurance for faster shit. Yeah. Because with with Benighted, he does some pretty impressive. Stuff. Oh yeah, the United stuff is yeah. insane. So yeah, like the the, the Neo. Stuff, I'm I'm excited to see him play tonight. Yeah, they're you fun. know, mm-hmm. uh, like I super I love, pro band. Yeah, I love Neo, and it's like very. It's a lot more like progressive type yes. stuff rather than yeah. the stuff I've seen Kevin play. Is like like just pure fast. death metal. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. super, he's just insanely fast. Yeah, right. But yeah. this stuff is a lot more like progressive and felt out, and 100%. you know. Yeah, so I'm stoked, man. He's an incredible drummer. Oh yeah, yeah, man. So you're you're picking up tips from him. Yeah, I'm picking along the, yeah, the way for sure, here, right? For sure, you got it, man. Like when you're <laughs> on the road with sick drummers, like you always gotta steal some secrets. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, the last tour was Europe with Naveen, and watching him play every night was really cool. And at the end, he gave me like a cracked cymbal kind of souvenir. Oh, yeah? So I was like, Aww. fuck it, yeah, dude. I'm using it as stacks. That's sick. I'm going to use that as stack. Yeah. yeah. Not put it on the wall or anything, like, as a memento. No, nah, I'm no, not no, getting no. like that. I'm going to break this even more. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Uh, I do. I have one symbol from a band, Primal Fear. The guy, it was their last show of the tour, and the guy basically gave it to me. Uh, and he was just like, yeah, like, it's like 20 bucks or something like that. And I was like, looked at it, I was like, I could use this, like, as a practice. Damn, dude. Symbol. 20 had bucks. one little crack in it, and I was like, I could get at least a month of practice with this dude, thing. Fucking definitely, man. Yeah, man. It's perfect. It's worth it compared to, like, trying to spend another, like, $300 on something. Yeah, I mean, I, I got a lot of crack symbols on my set right now. I got a crack china. I got a, my hi-hat cracked. That's the worst. Hi-hat? Super expensive. Fuck. Uh, two splashes. Uh... And in China. And I mean, you know, symbol endorsements are pretty hard to get. Yeah. I, I approached one brand twice and still small time. So uh, I'm kind of seeing uh, my options. Kind of, I love the symbols, so I don't want to just, you know, venture out just to get a deal to get cheap symbols. But at the same time, hey, man, like, I'm a musician. I need to play. 
Yeah. You can't be spending six hundred dollars on one symbol. Right. It's and ridiculous. I got like fucking twelve or I don't know, eighteen on my kids. So it's yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes it's like, you know, okay, you know, too small time, sure, but I gotta do something. You know? Yeah. Like I've had deals from smaller companies like them approach me about stuff and I'm like, I don't I don't know. And like they've given me symbols to try and I try them out and I'm like it just doesn't it doesn't compare. Yeah. Like it has to be I'll, one of the I'll, big Always stay four. true. Yeah, yeah. Always stay true. For, yeah, for, yeah. For me, I mean, fuck. Sabian sound good. Zojin sound good. Uh, Paiste sounds good. There's there's always series in a symbol company that just yeah. sound nice. Yeah. But when it's every series that sound nice, that's your brand. <laughs> yeah, that's it right there. Yeah. Another one yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you're like that through and through, right? Yeah, like, I only I yeah. only use Minel. Yeah. yeah. I only use Minel. I'm with Pearl. I'm with Los Cabos. Just Los like Cabos, drum sticks. Hell yeah, that's man. Right. Those dude, I had twelve sticks for thirty one shows and none of them cracked. None of them. No. Never broken a single stick. No, not even a single one. As soon as they get eaten up, because I do a lot of rim shots on my snare, I yeah. hit fucking hard. Yeah. And after a certain point, when I look at them, I'm like, a little bit of wood's coming out. I'm like, all right, let's change. Yeah. So I've been just going through them like that, but none of them actually broke. And I'm not using red hickory. I'm using the white hickories. Two Bs? 5.5 five AB. Oh, the 55 ABs. Yeah. Those are wow. my those are my boys. Yeah. I haven't met anyone that used those. I know. I'm, I like to be different, man. Because <laughs> when they <laughs> when they first made them, uh, Phil sent me a couple pairs and was like, "Check these out." And I was like, "I love them. I'm not gonna use them for playing metal. Like they yeah. just like I like the two Bs for that. But whenever I was playing like any like soft rock or hard rock type stuff, like I 55 ABs were my go to." Hundred percent. I love the way they feel for that. Uh, they just feel amazing on my hand, and also yeah. the three A's. The three A's. They have like a bit of like a, a ball tip. Yeah. I, I like the rebound on them, and the feel too is great. I actually switched from the five five ABs to because uh, I had still had one pair of three A's, and Jerome from the Omnific uh, uses three A's, so he's he's like, "Yo, dude, I have no, I have no more six. Can I use yours?" So I gave him like two two pairs. Yeah. Then I switched one night. I'm like, yo, this feels fucking great. So I did six shows with the three A's. The three A's. And then I'm like, let me just switch back to the five, five A's. And I was still comfortable. So I'm like, yeah, oh, these are both fine. of those are just fucking great. Uh, I have the rock ones. I don't use them. I think for faster shit with more blasts, I think it's just going to rebound easier when it's thicker. Yeah. When, when you don't need it, you know, you don't need it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I just... The two, the two B's even feel small to me now. Aren't so if aren't I went two back, B's like marching sticks? They're 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 big boys. Yeah. yeah, they're like about the same diameter as the rock sticks, but they're not as long. The rock are longer with like a a longer taper, I think. The thing is, man, sometimes symbols break when they're thicker sticks. It's true. It's true. I broke one crash I, dude, on the last tour and yeah. I can't afford to pay for dude, it. Dude, I remember so. when I was a, when I was younger and I was just playing bar shows and I saw Alex Pelletier, Alex Grind from the Spice Dike. Yeah. He used to yeah. have the 2S, 2S marching sticks and he used to flip them and hit with the big fucking tree trunks. Yeah, and I, I started, I and I, that. Yeah. I used to play like that live because I thought it was going to be faster. Yeah. Maybe it did. Who knows? But fuck that I go through my symbols and I'm like, why? And then people were like, dude, you're hitting you're fucking them with tree trunks, Yeah, dude. I'm like, all right, <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. I'm about to change it. Yeah. Well, you're Spencer, right. right. uh, Spencer from Archbire, mm -hmm. he plays with marching sticks. Yeah, like, see, straight up marching sticks. Well, I know why, because the heavier it is, the more rebound you get, so the faster yeah. you can pull it off, you know? That's it. And his symbols are always broken. There you go. So, hey. There you go. You know? And he's hitting them a mile a minute, too. Like, yeah. He hits his symbols way more than I do in a but song. But yeah, see, see like so. his, his left gravity blasts, mm -hmm. they have to be heard. So you you need a fucking thicker stick to do that. So no matter how thin your stick, like it matters, man. Every Everything matters. Everything matters. Everything, yeah, oh, the yeah, size the, matters, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So all the, all the drummers out there, size the does size matter. Size matter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> so, all right, let's talk about uh, speaking of sizes. Let's uh, talk about your kit. Yeah, you're using two 22 inch kick drums. Yeah, two 22 by 20s. I'm using uh, 10, 12, 13. My 13s on my left side as a floor tom. Oh, okay, but it's a is it a it's a rack tom? It's a rack. But it's, it's a rack. But, but it's on the floor. Yeah, but it's okay. on the floor, and then Neat. I got a 16. And okay. uh, it's a Pro Masterworks kit. Absolute beauty. Yeah. Um, sounds great. I don't have to do much. Like with with the what's their suspension system? The um, the Pearl. Uh, I don't know Pearl stuff. I'm Apex all day, baby. So, you're you're Mape, yeah. Yeah. Dude, they don't move, man. You know, like the Tama, they all shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, don't, yeah, don't no. move. They stay they don't there. Move. Everything's secure. I got yeah. my my uh, my cage. And I just grab my cage and load it into the trailer so nothing moves. So when I got to build my kit, I divide into two. I, I um, uh, close both of them, so two yep. and two. And I uh, just put them on stage. I got tape on my rug, my minor rug, and uh, it's super quick, man. Yeah. Everything's, everything's um, memory locked. Mm-hmm. Because I know how much of a bitch it is on tour to just you know take out your stand, uh, put it, place it there. Yeah. So I want it to be as fast as possible, especially when you're dealing with um, just changeovers that are 15 minutes. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. Even on the three, because it's just three bands, no openers on this tour at all. There was a few openers, a few, yeah, a few they locals, slid a few, yeah, yeah. They slid, I, mean, I think five dates they put locals. Okay. And a lot of, I think one venue was a small venue, and I had to put my kid on the side. Oh. So I was just facing all my musicians. And then looking <laughs> over there, and these dudes just looking straight at my playing, just like, hi. You know? Hi. Yeah. Hi. You look over your shoulder, yeah. and there's an audience. Like, what? I think it's cool because okay. they can see everything, you know? Yeah. But whatever. I'd like to do that. Just turn my kid around one show and yeah. just, yeah, I'm going to play at the front of the stage. We're doing opposite. Instead of like all the guitar players and vocalists at the front, <laughs> drums at the front, but facing the wrong way. Yeah. Face, <laughs> so I just play to our backdrop. Perfect. And then everyone can see what I'm doing back there. You know? It's cool. I, th- I think even Flo when you did that too one day yeah. in that Cafe Campus. Uh, by the way, the the pro kit I have is, is Flo Munez. Bought oh, it from you... him from, uh, you know, that 101 Metal Drumming DVD? No, I don't. He, he put that out. And yeah. And that he was, was selling. He was selling that? his kit before I was endorsed by Pearl. I bought his kit. And then I got endorsed, and I was like, "I'm not ever getting beat up, you know." I uh, my drum cases are just yeah, destroyed. Yeah, yeah they got yeah, soft yeah. cases, so oh, dude, I think it's time to get a new kit. Yeah, and I'm really gonna go with an eight inch. I really, really want that eight inch. Dude. Eight, ten, twelve. Eight, ten, twelve. I don't know, maybe sixteen, eight. I want an eighteen too. I want a fucking. I want an eighteen. But they're dude, big, dude. I want 18 on the the left, I think. The, no. I like my 14 on the left. So right now I just do 10, 12, 14 floor, 16. Uh-huh. Then I want another, I want an 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, so, that's sick. That's but I, sick. Might, I might move the, so it's 14, 16, 18. Because I like those big, like, like dun duns. I, do, I like doing that open hand. I do that shit all the time. You, you, you're going to see dude. me tonight. That's all I do. Yeah. Dude, I love it. As I, I just like switch, to play open and just oh, kind of like John Longstreth. I, I think that's one of the reasons. I was a huge death metal teenager. So when I saw Origin Live, mm-hmm. I saw Longstreth. His kid's just so compressed, just like a wall. I was he, like, no kidding. He can hit all these things fast because everything's close. Yeah. Right? So He's so precise. When, when you got to stretch over, that's when you can't. You know, like, that's the main reason why the, the jazz drummers open their hand like that because when you get to the floor tom we want to crash out your 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 hands blocking you so when you turn your hand like this and then you have that extra stick length there you're good yeah you know? wow oh, that's interesting i never even thought about that that's why jazz yeah. players play like that yeah they don't have all the simple mm-hmm. stands and their crashes would be there because the right would be there yeah. so they have to cross over yeah and that was the only way to be able to do that yeah that's crazy yeah. yeah, like for me, I have all my drums in front of me. Like from where my shoulders sit. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah. Nothing is behind <coughs> me. Everything is in front because I'm not like Ron Jerzombek. Yeah, no, no, none of that. I'm worried. I'm gonna just throw my shoulder at one show 
and I'm going to fuck yeah. myself over, right? Yeah. Like, I know so many drummers with shoulder issues and stuff. Yeah, dude. So, uh, uh, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about posture. It's so important, man. If anything, if you're practicing a technique and it hurts, fucking stop, dude. When I was practicing uh, heel toe, double strokes, I felt yeah. the pain in my knee. Just a little, little pain in my knee. And every time I was doing it, I was like, ooh, this hurt. And I would stop. I'm like, feel good. oh, I can't really, can't walk too much. I'm like, okay, that's not good. I got to change what I'm doing to make that not happen. And, you know, I think any stress on any limb is not good. When you're playing drums, you got to feel relaxed all the time. You got to have your elbows closest to here. Uh, just your retract your scapula. Be super relaxed. And kind of just... Hold your hand like this, like a fucking T-Rex, dude, or a Velociraptor. Like, just fucking, fucking make him hang, dude, and just okay. do strokes like that. You don't need, you don't, like, as soon as your arm, like, you're wasting energy, man. Yeah. So you just, you can get a fucking hard stroke just by raising your, your drumstick and slapping it. You, you'll get the same amount of volume if you, if you do that. Yeah. You, you just will. But you're just wasting energy. I could play heel toe for three hours and not be swimming at all at all and i'm thankful because last european tour i did with brought by pain opening for beyond creation and theos and gorod i was doing all single strokes and i oh, was yeah. fucking like you're just dying. i was ugh, fucking tired every night yeah and i'm like nah man i gotta learn that heel toe and i know my my, <laughs> my buddy eric marotti was like yeah, man, I'm too fucking lazy to do singles. Like, trying to smoke weed and just, you know. That's the. So I was like, I, that's I, I, the yeah, I guess I'm going to do Eric, that, dude. You know? <laughs> Eric impression I've ever heard, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's exactly. I did a yeah. run with him in 2015, and that was it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, like, ah, fuck that single stroke stuff. Like, double strokes. It's too man. much. And, dude, yeah. I see all these Euro these European <laughs> drummers, like, posting your tutorials, and they're like, okay, in order to do. And I'm not, I'm not hating. It's just it's a lot, man. Like, it's a sport at that point. It's like Olympics. But they say, okay, you got to learn the swivel. You got to learn <coughs> heel toe. You got to learn the doubles. You got to learn that other technique. <clears throat> and then you got to do practice for 20 minutes, three times a day. Like, dude, come on. Nobody's got time for that. No. Nobody's adults, got time man. for that. And it's, like, it's just for endurance. And I mean, come on, like. Everyone's got lives. Everyone's got to pay rent. Everyone's got to go to work. Yeah. No one's going to be doing that. And if if you're taking it that seriously, good luck getting girls, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You're a fucking nerd. <laughs> like, I mean, yes, I'm a nerd, but like, yeah. there's other things in life than just going fast and worrying about technique and professionalism on the drum set. You know? That's it. You want to have fun, dude. That's why we do this. That's why I play metal, you know? Yeah, and, like, for me, though, like, I put that time in in the early years of play. Like, I yeah. I put the time in to build that muscle memory, and then just going on tour, you know, like, you, you build up all that stuff. Learning a new technique is a pain in the ass when yeah. you get to be in your 30s because yeah, yeah. you don't have that time. You don't have the time to dedicate, like, two hours That's every it. day. That's we got to work jobs. You know, we, we have to continue living our lives. We can't just put everything on hold to learn a new technique. Yeah. Like, so it becomes a lot more difficult and it takes more time. Yeah, because ultimately all you're doing is just impressing other men. That's all. That is what we do. That's what yeah. being a metal musician is about. Yeah. yeah. We're, just, we're just trying to give other dudes boners. Like That's, that's it. exactly that's what it, it is, man. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm not, I, I, I'm not dude, against I, dude, that or anything. I, 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 was, you know? I, I was struggling with... Because, you know, everyone was like, oh, well, how, how do you get known? Okay, you, you put YouTube videos out and you put, you got to go strong on social media and all that. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I was just like, this is like, let me just pull a stupid video. So I did like a, this is how you gravity blast and whatever. So I was gravity blasting while doing doubles. And I was doing like a stupid Southern voice because I'm a trucker and I was just going to the States and I was just dabbing into that southern uh, accent and I was I just it, making man. a fool out of it. I love it. So I was just making that southern accent while I was just fucking um, gravity blasting, uh, gravity blasting yeah, and, using, yeah. and then I'm like, well, and then I just dropped my zoom. That's, that's how, what the fuck did I say? <laughs> that's how you get all the all the guys or something and then yeah. like a bunch of people like that shit. And I'm like, well, this is what I gotta do. 
but just yeah, man. people want short content, um, short format. They want to scroll and just fucking laugh because this world's so yeah. fucked up, right? You yeah, know, we, that's just, fu- it's fucked, but that's how it is, man. Eesh. That is, it is what it, it is. is, what it is man. You want a short form, no more than like 30 seconds, and you have to do something funny in, yeah, that, man. in there. And, like, just be, and just be cool. Like, that's why El Estebario Siberiano is doing so good. He's just doing short clips, and he's a fuck. He's got sick chops, and he started doing this beast. one hand thing. Yeah, and I was experimenting with that, and he's got all the time. To, that's why he's not playing in any bands. He's just like, well, I'm gonna waste my time. I'm gonna fucking innovate, and that's just it. and he's just dude. The guy is numbers, dude. changing. Yeah, how you play the drums? Like yeah. he's insane. Like the one more recent video I saw him, he's just playing this beat one handed, whatever, everything's good, and then or no, he's I think he's playing with two hands. And it's a sick beat, like, going, like, all over the place. And then he grabs two sticks and starts doubling up yeah. on the, the fucking hat. On the stack. Hat, on yeah, the yeah, stack yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, doing so. this other crazy shit with this other. And, like, the guy's insane. He's and insane. you know what? He, he, he picks his shit right because he, he always does mm-hmm. songs that people know. How to make him harder. And play with one hand. So it's just, like, that's the ultimate niche. And now only he can do it. Yeah. So he said, if anyone else does stuff, it just like won't that, be as good. It's just he, like, he, and he, you're he, just copying. Yeah, he's yeah. so everybody knows his shit. Yeah, right? and now so. he's just so used to it that nobody, no one could do it as good as him because they have to spend time to get good to do it like him. And he's just, he's doing great, dude. I'm fucking proud of him, man. And uh, Eloy is one of uh, one of my favorite drummers right now. I teched for him on the boat on 70k, and I oh, just yeah. watched him play and back, and I was good. just like. Fucking Thor on drums, dude. Just beating that shit up. But yeah. So tasteful at the same time. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's doing. But fuck, fuck man. man. Like, wow, dude. You know? And then I was chilling with the dark, uh, dark funeral drummer. And he, he made me practice this shit. He, he, he was doing a gravity blast on his floor, Tom. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I was like, I got to do that. You know, so yeah, I started, you gotta, started you practicing. Sneak that I in. Do it. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sneak that in somewhere, you know, like, fuck. Gravity blast on everything. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. I, I don't have any gravity blast. I don't do any gravity blast live. You don't have to. Like, I like, Chris, I don't know if you know Chris Donaldson. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I always record with him, favorite engineer. And every time, yeah. like, I'm like, all right, dude, for this part, I'm going to do a gravity bike. He's like, fuck you, don't do that shit. I'm like, I'm going to do it anyway, dude. I'm glad I didn't try to sneak it in. <laughs> he's I, like, I hate gravity blast. You're fucking stupid. <laughs> but he's very opinionated, Chris, uh, but he jokes around with it, right? Very, very much so. But, yeah. um, I recorded a record with him uh, with like two years ago now, and uh, he's, a, he's a blast to work with, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. Where, yeah, man. Where are we at for time? Okay, okay. We're going on 40 minutes here, so we should wrap things up so you can get um, get some food in here. Get some beef, baby. Yeah, buddy. So there's lots of different places here. Because yeah. I, like I said, I think there's two different Thai restaurants across Dude, I got, the street. I got meat in my RV. I'm just going to cook it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm stocked up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right into this RV life. You yeah. guys are what? Dude, we're fucking gr- I, I, I grilled a tomahawk. <laughs> perfect, perfect cook. Like... <laughs> On the grill outside, we were, I don't know where we were. Yeah, you guys got we, a mini we just barbecue? grill every, everywhere we can. Like, you know. Yeah, that's the one thing we, we were missing. Stove, we got a grill uh, outside. We got a shower outside, shower inside, shower outside Fridge. and inside. Yeah, I got. I need the name name for this RV company you got this from. We actually hired a dude. In oh, Quebec. Yeah. He was okay. uh, like RV for rent, and then our driver, which is my good friend. He had to have his insurance. Long story short, couldn't do it. And he also dressed for other bands. And um, so my my guitarist, Kev, just asked the guy who owns there. He's like, you want to drive us? The guy's like 60 years old. And he's like, drive a band on tour? Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And it's been a blast with yeah. him. He's, he, like, he, he's got a wife at home. And now he's like, I don't know how I'm going to go back home and live this normal life. Dude, you know, I'm like, well, it. good luck, dude. Right? <laughs> That's what we think. Every every time we're like, fuck, I can't wait to get back home, you know, on the road for a month. I know you guys don't you guys got like four dates left after this, I think. Yeah. Or including tonight. 
Yeah, um, yeah including tonight. I'm, I'm not doing Montreal, though. Phil Phil Boucher is going to be playing his show with his band. Yeah. So I'm going to stay one out, uh, get my springs, because I was talking to you. That's right. My springs broke off, and I'm using some smaller ones, and it's a nightmare. But, um, <laughs> yeah, for, for Boston, it's sold out, too. And then the Gramercy Theater in New York. And then I, as soon as I get home, I got one day off. I'm going to build my kit. Practice for I don't know if you know this band Disembodied Tyrant. No, I don't. I'm gonna be uh, doing two music videos for them. Sick. So I gotta Sick. learn these savage drum parts and perform them as best as I can. And then I'm flying out again a couple of days after, and then gotta go back through. So I'm just like nonstop right now. Yeah. So it's 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 tough. It's it's tough. I don't I don't even know if I'm gonna be going back to work because I'm gonna be. Just by doing this tour, I got some offers That's to do other shit. So I'm very grateful for that, man. That's so awesome. That I, It's so awesome to see, like, your progression, to Like, starting with all the, the content and everything. And then uh, the Beyond guys. Like, I, you guys are both from Montreal. But you said that your band toured with Beyond Creation before. Yeah. So I guess that brought you guys closer together. 100%. And like yeah. so many people are like, well, how do you get these gigs? How do you do this? How do you do that? I was like, A, put yourself out there. Make sure every opportunity that you get, you make the most out of it. Yeah. And then be fucking tight, dude. Yeah. And it's a lot of word of mouth. And it's, you know what? It's not even being tight. If, if you're tight and you're an asshole, no one's going to want to work with you. No. Be you, a you, good hang. You got yeah. Be you gotta be to a good hang, with, man. man. You, you gotta and work hard too. You know, I, I, but I do think for any aspiring session drummers, sometimes right. you gotta take low paying stuff first, and it sucks because all like I said before, all the same drummers are doing all they're getting all the gigs, man. And you know what? I sp I speak to them, and they're do they're doing it for cheap too. So there's not much in metal where. We're yeah, not making money here. Yeah, we're not we're making not. money. We're not making money. We're, <laughs> Nobody's making we're, money. We're making memories. That's what we're making. That's right. Okay. On that <laughs> note, thank you very much for joining me. Yes, sir, Corey. Oh, man, I can't <laughs> wait to see you shred tonight. So. Hell yeah, man. It's going to be sick.